Coors Light presents Call the Coach with Nick Rolovich, live from Ruby Tuesday in the Moanalua Shopping Center. Brought to you by No Foods of Hawaii. Say yes to no. The HGEA. We are HGEA Strong. City Mill. Big on health, big on savings. Proud to be local. Hawaiian Financial Federal Credit Union. Xanthacin, the safe anti-inflammatory for health and longevity. Available at GNC, POP Fishing and Marine. Gear, glory, we got it on Pier 38 and Coors Light. Now, here's your host, Bobby Curran, on ESPN 1420 and the Sideline Hawaii app. Good evening and welcome to our Tuesday edition of Call the Coach with head coach Nick Rolovich, and we have been celebrating here because we got a little early start. Uh, we were not on the air because of the uh, National League uh, play-in game, playoff game, uh, wild card, and so we are now starting officially, even though we've been here for a while. So we've had all, a lot of fun. People we have had a lot of fun. I mean, I, I, people who are here are going to be talking <laughs> about, glad I went to that one. That's right. <laughs> well, we, uh, we have a couple of uh, guest players here. Yeah, we do. The special teams player of the week in the Mountain West Conference, Ryan Mescal is here. His holder and our punter, Stan Guardian, also here. Two guys who have become big, big contributors and who are doing, I think, really good things for the uh, Australian-U.S. relationship. They got barbecue sauce all over their face. Single <laughs> That's good. good. Good appetite then. That's all good, guys. We really appreciate you coming down. We think the best is still ahead for both of you. So. Thank you guys for having us. It's been a wonderful evening, and the food's fantastic. Oh, oh wow. Go. Hey, solid. Yeah. I don't know. Where's Rick Nakashima? Did you hear that, Rick? You'll be invited back for sure. So, I, I do want to get to a couple things. I said this when we started here in-house, but I do want to repeat it. I just thought the level of grit, the character that team showed, I, I actually felt they outlasted. In a lot of ways, they ju you guys looked fresh when you came out for every possession, O and D on, in overtime. I, I just think you won. That was a legit win. I yeah. mean, that was legit with a better team at the end of the day won that game. It was, uh, it was an incredible night. I think everyone who watched it, you know, shares that feeling. The ups and downs. Um, I thought San Jose battled, you know, and got, jumped on us team. quick. And yeah. I think they'll be... You know, I think they'll, people will take them serious from, from here on out. You know, did we wish we'd go there and, 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 and it would be easy? That would have been fine. But um, had a hunch it wasn't going to be, and I don't know if any of the ones in front of us are ever going to be. So. Well, your hunches are pretty good, and you're predicting the same thing for this weekend. Yeah. It's going to be a battle. Well, you just got to watch a couple of plays on defense of Wyoming football, and, and you know that they, they – doesn't matter if they're at, at – what is it, 7,200 feet, or they come down to sea level, they're going to play hard. They're going to sweat a little, though. Yeah. yeah. I think. Yeah, we're having signs made. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to 90% humidity. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> because they love to remind you <laughs> that you're, I don't know, 8,000 feet right. or whatever the That's hell right. it is. So. But let, let me get to something right off the bat. Dayton Faruda, I you know, every once in a while a guy comes in, my understanding after the game, after the fact, is that he was nursing some level of injury. And, and if you guys could have gotten away with maybe not playing him, you might have. That was the plan, you know. And he came in in the second half. I, in my mind, he was a game changer. He might have been the game changer. I agree with that. He he just got he, – he has some of that Kaimana Padello desire. Yeah. You know, he he's, he's wanted so long to be a major contributor on this football team. And, you know, when I first got here, he wasn't in the mix really at linebacker. Then we moved him over doing some, some off-the-ball tight end stuff, and he just never really found a home. And then, boom, run and shoot. Okay, where's the big back? There he is, Dayton Fruit. Oh, and he he's in it. a tradition here, Reagan Maui, oh. Nate Lawa, there's uh, West Kali Ikipi. Oh, West. We've had some of these guys that are just relent. He's the, ne the next in the tradition. Yes, he is. And, you know, he could graduate and, 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 and finished off. You know, he could, this could have been his last year of football. Wow. Um, and, you know, he's getting married, I believe, and having a baby and kind of ready to start his, his life, but he's, he's having a time of his life. I you bet know? he is. <laughs> I mean, it looks like it. Yes, he is. And I thought he was actually managing. You would know this better than I, but it looked like he was changing the way they had to play you. Well, they changed Once the way he, they had to tackle. <laughs> yeah, well, for sure, yeah. but they also got very nervous about where he was, where your smaller guys, the Fred Hollies and the Elijah, didn't seem – 
to make them change what they were doing. But they perked up when Dayton Fruita was in. Yeah, he's a, he's a real downhill guy. He's got pretty good vision, though. I mean, you, you see some of the things he does. Um, he probably misses one. He missed one run uh, in overtime. I think he wished he had back. But for the most part, um, if he's running the ball, um, somebody's feeling it when they're tackling him. All right, we, we're on a little different schedule tonight. We're going to try to get Rolo back to work. So we're going to take a quick break. We want to remind everybody, we're giving away, if you're here, we're giving away prizes. It's time, isn't it, to get some prizes to everybody who came? Um, we are going to probably take this show to 740. So I want to encourage you, if you want to call in, if you have a question for Rolo, 296-1420 is the deal. Text at the same number. If you have a question, we'll try to get to it. We're at Ruby Tuesdays, and this is called The Coach. <laughs> so I have a question to ask of Ryan. I have to ask Ryan Mesca. Hey. The guy was perfect all year. He's perfect. He hasn't missed a field goal. He hasn't missed an extra point. Get up here, Mescal. Put so, your salad away. <laughs> he hasn't missed anything. He was perfect. He goes to San Jose State. He misses two field goals and an extra point. He's the player of the week. Player of the week. Special team. Special team. I said, Ryan Mescal. What if he missed four field goals <laughs> and two extra points? Would he have been the national player of the week? All right. Wait, do we have a mic? Can we give the mic to Ryan real quick? Ryan? I have to tell you, you are part of the Australian Connection here. We love you. Thank you, Mike. You have improved so much in the course of the year you've been here. I mean, people don't realize this. Football is a relatively new deal for you. Yeah. And uh, I did. we did find it okay. ironic that with a little struggle there and during the course of that game, you still get to be player of the week because <laughs> when you hit the winner, listen, you hit the winner. That's the one that matters. Yeah. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, well, obviously it didn't, didn't go perfect throughout the game and um, – I heard there was a bit of a commentator's jinx, actually. He, just, <laughs> right before he, it, he said, this kid's been perfect all year, and then bang, all of a sudden, no good. So, hey, thanks, must, for, thanks for that. Must have been the TV guys. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, it was, it was good. Like, uh, thankfully, the boys were all positive throughout the whole thing. Obviously, it didn't go um, the way we wanted in that first overtime. Could have won it there and then. But, you know, Rollo had a chat to me. All the boys had a chat. Kept me positive. What did, I I say? Just what did I say, Ryan? Uh, well, <laughs> actually, after the first uh, touchdown we scored in overtime, I, I didn't realise you had to kick a PAT. Um, I didn't know the rules, so I sort of just celebrated and walked over to the kicking net to just keep my leg warm, and then I just hear people yelling, Maskell, Maskell, get on the field. And um, the kicking, I, I, the, was, I was wondering about that, because you're a little late getting out. I'm like, yeah. I was actually, the kicking net was on the other side of the field, so I had a 100-yard sprint to... To stand over there, Stan was waiting for me to get ready for the kick, and uh, thankfully went through. And I've come off the sideline, and Rollo's saying, you "Lock in, you've got to kick the PAT." And I said, "I didn't know you had to." And then he said, uh, "You don't know the rules. You're Australian." <laughs> well, one of the things I'm noticing is you don't. I mean, you're kind of the uh, I'm trying to remember who the golfer is that just walks up and puts it. He doesn't spend a lot. Of, you now on the I mean, you kind of get lined up, and off you go. I mean, there's not a lot of messing around. Yeah, I, I probably messed around a little bit too much trying to figure it all out last season, but now I've just just trust my technique and and don't think about it too much and just try to do the same thing every time, but don't take too long doing that. Just get set, bang, kick it. Now I I don't know how this works with with the uh, guys. I mean, because with a place kicker, there's really three parts. There's the snapper, no board, who's mm -hmm. a captain and is pretty good at his job. Very good. And there's Stan, who does a not only the punter but Jay Gaudian right there. He does a heck of a job at the hole. But when there's one missed, is there ever any, like, oh, I don't know. That was, <laughs> wasn't that me. was a little, uh, <laughs> wasn't I don't know. Me. Could, you get that, could you get the laces right there, please? I mean, how do you guys handle that? Is it just like, okay, Goldfinger, get up move here. on? <laughs> <laughs> Where is that? Goldfinger. I Goldfinger. Love, I love the nickname. Come Come on. Come on. <laughs> We, last week we had China and yeah. cash. Now we got Goldfinger. <laughs> oh. Hey, you guys don't get treated like this in Australia. Just remember that. Yeah, no, these got, yeah, we love we love the ones. They're the best to us. You know, oh. you got to realize you are unique because there is not a no. I don't think there's ever been on a college team. There's been Australian Ooh, punters and Australian Ooh. place kickers, but I don't think any teams ever had one of each from Australia. That's a pretty special deal. 
Yeah, it is. Um, obviously, as I was answering your question before, Stan's actually the best holder in the whole country, in my opinion. The world. So, I, oh, yeah. I don't... You gotta love that. Yeah, and uh, he did it the other night. Um, you know, over time, we'd been out in the field for a long time. He'd been drinking a lot of water, so it got to the point where he needed to actually take a, take a minute to pee his pants before we went out there. So he did, he did it all with, um, yeah, piss down his leg and uh, sweaty hands, but he did... He, he really did, and he did a great job. He kept his cool because obviously the kicks pressure, but if Thank Stan doesn't we're catch... not on air. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, Stan, your response to that, because you have your own job. I mean, your main job is punting. Yeah, yeah, main job is punting. Okay, I've noticed one thing. When you take a step or two to the side, sort of beginning of a rugby style, not maybe not full on, but I noticed one game, you, I can't remember the game, but you got cracked. And I guess they don't call that because if you don't go straight ahead. You break the pocket. Oh, my God. Yeah. I, I, that, I, that might make me stay straight. Well, Coach Rollo didn't tell me that rule <laughs> before that. So, no, no. But you learned it pretty well. Yeah, learned it pretty quick. So in terms of the relationship for you two guys, I mean, uh, you guys are pretty copacetic, I guess. It's Everything works good. There's no – I mean, you know, you're from the same country. Are you even from the same part? I mean, I, I was in Australia long enough to know – that is one freaking big ass country. Yeah. I mean, you could be from another part of it, and it's like the difference between New York and there South is, Arizona yeah. or something. I mean, it's crazy big. Yeah. So you guys didn't know each other until you were here? Yeah, we didn't know each other. We went to the same academy, um, and obviously I got told about Stan being at Hawaii. So we linked up via Facebook and had a conversation that way. But until I came over here, I didn't, didn't know Stan. Yeah. So And it was great. Um, we lived together, and we spent a lot of time together, and... I think that helps with um, the performance on the football field. Um, we trust each other, so um, he does a great job. So I, I can't be happier with a holder like him because it's not easy. There's pressure on him to catch the ball, get it down the right spot. It's not as easy as it looks, and he does a good job. So. No, I never thought it looked easy. He makes it look easy. I, I, he does, but I'm, I'm think, I've always thought that's a job that's a little more yeah. treacherous than people let oh, on. You'd held for a little yeah. bit, didn't you? Yeah, this is a world that. championship holder. That's right. Right here. A Arena <laughs> League champion. Yep. There you go. I mean, no, it's like there's a certain amount of pressure on that. Everybody thinks it's the only, and the thing is, they only notice you if you screw up. Yep. Yeah. No one ever says, what a hold. Well, so, so like, it's interesting I do what you practice. guys say. <laughs> yeah. He does. Go ahead. You guys say, like, oh, great hold, great hold, but Noah Borden's the one really doing the work. Yeah. I feel like we could sit you back there at eight yards, Bobby, and you could put the ball down. And if was <laughs> that good, he'd just there you go. Anyway. Uh, there you go. I'm quite sure you're right about that, Stan, <laughs> but it's very generous of you to say. Hey, we've got uh, two Australians on the mic. It's going to get pretty funny here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, as long as it's not on the air, we're all good. You guys can let it rip by the way. Perfect. So i got to tell you, when, when, you got, when we played in Australia against Cal, and hey, that's when we picked this guy up. Really? That was, yeah. that was it. That was my first one. Yeah. Were you at that game? Did you? No, play? actually, I was living in America playing a different sport. Ah, <laughs> yep. all right. A rugby or something? No, nah, soccer. Soccer. Ah, okay. Yep. The, uh, anyway, when we're there, we were at the place in Sydney, the Rocks, I think they call it, the neighborhood. Is that, do I yep. have that right? The Rocks. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, so I just thought we ate, there was a gal from Kahuku who was the chef at one of the restaurants. And she, I gotta, I'm going to cook up some roux for you guys. And we Ooh. thought, all right, we'll try I've got to tell it? you something. Oh, it was good. Was it? Yeah. yeah, well, she had it all done with, I don't know, boysenberry sauce or whatever. I mean, it was really good. So I was thinking maybe we should get everybody here to join in and have some of the food you guys love shipped over. If we did that, what would it be? Uh, my, yeah, a veggie might. <laughs> That'd be like... A, you could have a Vegemite. You could have a Vegemite toasted sandwich as a side, and maybe some kangaroo and mashed potatoes as a, as a main. That's pretty Australian. Or All right. Ruin mash. Like something else. What about you? <laughs> yeah, I mean we could get some crocodile over yeah. from where I live. Yeah. Gotta oh, leave God. that up there. I mean you got to be pretty game to try it, but it's pretty good. I think you got to be game to catch it. Yeah. <laughs> Not so much to eat it. Yeah. Uh, Those lives crocodiles in are big over there. Real big. That's not like alligators. That's not like a Florida alligator. That, those things are twice the size of alligators. I yeah. just thought they got to 24 feet. 24 feet? 24 How many feet? meters is that? Uh, like 20 How many feet? meters they is don't even understand. Feet. Feet. I don't know. They have We're a hard almost, enough time with yards. Almost eight meters? Yards and meters are almost the same. I don't want to be same. asking questions people can't <laughs> answer. <laughs> 
Uh, guys, we uh, enjoy you here. We love the accent. If you ever come down, we'll put you back on because it's fun to listen to you. <laughs> we'll let you go get some dinner, but uh, thanks for coming by, and uh, good luck to you both. You guys thanks, have been uh, real contributors. I was, uh, I was just looking yeah, pretty at funny, yeah, no, that's pretty funny good. I was looking at some of the stats, uh, Rolo, and you have one of the, if not, I think he's still the leading passer in the country, Nicole McDonald. And John Ursua is running away. No one is even ballpark with him. He's got 12, I think 12 now, touchdown catches. Yep. Uh, where is that happening? Uh, Ashley had 19, and that's the record. And John's got 12 now. in six games. Holy shit. He's got more than half the season left. Yep. And he's already got 12. I'm, I'm taking the over on that one. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think he's going to get there. He's... Uh, He's a remarkable talent. He's not very big. I hear people say, yeah, you know, uh, you know, I don't know if people mean this as a compliment, but they say he's a little different. I yeah. hear that all the time about Ursula. But it, as far as I, I can tell, it's a compliment. Yeah. Because yeah. I'd like to be different the way he's different. <laughs> I mean, that, that's pretty special. Uh, and, you know, it, 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 and I don't want to overlook the other receivers because Cedric Bird and, and JoJo Ward, and we've seen. Marcus has come yes, through. Yes, Marcus Armstrong Brown. It seems to be some, like he's our back shoulder yeah, specialist. Yeah, he's our back shoulder specialist. And, you know, they're, they're all being productive, but John is, is really the guy who he just has a knack for getting open and, and making plays. He's very competitive. He doesn't come across, you know, in his interviews probably. or But when you see him on game day, you know, especially when we were down a little bit, he's like heavy breathing and staring at me like a, like you know, a rhinoceros. Like a, kind of like a rhinoceros, but, you know, he's, I he's, say he's that. like I've stomping around a little personal bit. personal with a he's rhino, a, but myself. You know, he, yeah. he, he comes on that field to make plays, you know. Well, I mean, I, I just love the way he goes about his business because when he gets a ball in open space, I, I, if you're a, a safety or, God forbid, a linebacker, you must be petrified because he's the kind of guy that can not only beat you, but he can embarrass you. He, you know, he's really got a pretty good natural feel for the people around him, you know, like even that out route he caught that he turned back inside yes. and went, I don't know how long You can't it was. teach that, can you? No, it's hard. You know, but it's reps. It's understanding spacing and, and how people are chasing him. It's, he, he's, he's definitely got a gift. One of the things, and I, I admire this about you because I never, I, we kept looking at you on the sideline, and you never lost your rag at all. I mean, you never looked like, oh, my God, this is absolutely out of control. I, and I, I almost lost my I, rag on that guy. <laughs> oh, man, well, when he wasn't on the field at the time? Yeah, no, I, I was a little worried. I have to say, I said to Venere, I said, that's a little unusual. Because, but, you know, you get that he doesn't really have the rules. It's all right. He knows them now. Yeah. Overtime. Yeah. OT, we OT. call it here in America. There you go. <laughs> hey, he answered the bell. I love those Australian guys. They're good guys. And they're good, Australian and they're talented. Like. That's no, right. Hard to find an Australian you don't like. That's right. Something about the country, I guess. But those or the guys rule. are... Those guys are contributors, man. And let's let me get to a couple of the guys. One of the things that I think, and we see this in other sports, there's three coaches that have been hired recently in, in basically what are huge sports in Hawaii. You, of course, in football with the first, Aran Ganat, and uh, Robin Amo. And I, I, I felt like from the day those hirings were announced that all of you were going to be eventually judged by who you could get here. Who can you get? Who could you recruit? And I don't know when, if you changed horses on this or where you came to the decision or it was just kind of fortuitous, but when we had, and I was talking to Mouse about this because he's looking around, we're watching Cedric and yeah. JoJo right. and Ursua, and Mouse is saying, you know, as Mouse is vertically challenged in his, himself. <laughs> he loves it. And he was saying, he, I said, well, is this kind of what you look for? He goes, well. He's going, well, you know what I really like is big and fast. <laughs> he goes, but if I can't get big and fast, give me fast. Yeah. And you've got fast. we got fast. Was that a conscious decision? Oh, well, yeah, we to had say, to. say, forget the size, let me go get guys who can fly. Once we made that decision, we had to get some speed on the field. You know, and, and we had some young ones who we think are going to be good. They just, you know, need a little seasoning right now. Um, and, and, you know, we may add a couple more JC-type uh, bodies to get some just as many – football players and athletes that we can find will try to fill this, this roster. Well, with. you can say the same thing that June once said here when he was called a recruiter-receiver. 
And I still remember him saying well, I, to I me. I think about that sometimes. When he says, uh, do you want to come here and get 15 targets a game, or do you want to spend four years blocking the strong safety? Yeah. Um, let me sign up for the 15 <laughs> targets. That's not a hard one. Taping your fingers. Yes. You know. I mean, geez, Louise, that seems like. No, it's very, it's very are, there, are there a ton of really fast 5'8", five, 5'9", five, guys out there? I mean, are you willing to say, I know you, you'd love to get six feet, guys that can fly, but. If that's the choice, are, are you heading in I that direction? I think direct? the, the early success of the receivers, and especially John, I think has really brought attention to some recruits that, you know, this may be where I want to spend my time. No. Um, you know, they don't, like, like Mouse said, they don't have to be 5'8", but I think they do have to be good people and have an understanding of being unselfish because the run and shoot is not, you know, give me the ball. I can't call a play to get you the ball. Yeah. I can call a screen to get you the ball. That's what I'm about. But you have to be willing to – um, almost subject yourself to the offense and, and just let it begin to give you the catches when it's your time. You know, it's, it's really a, a hard process for some guys who are – sometimes the wide receiver mentality is very selfish. Yeah, and, a little prima and, donna. Yeah, position. and you don't – you know, you, you insert that, and then then they become locker room lawyers because John Ursua got 12 catches, but I didn't get my six catches, or you know, and they just – well, it and, seems and that like these happen. guys, for the most part, oh, have great. dispensed with that. Well, it's like, a, let's get it done here. What a steal with um, JoJo, you know, learning the offense. And, um, oh, that's an interesting question. That is an interesting. By the way, this is going to be for Stan because somebody has texted, and I think it's an interesting question. He says, does the holder change how the ball is angled on longer distance kicks? That's what happened in overtime. They don't even pay attention. Look at them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Stan, maybe you can give us an answer. Do you do you hold differently on, a, say, a 48, 50-yard kick than you do on a 24-yard one? No, no, it's the same every time. Right. And then Ryan comes through and what do I do? Oh, yeah, it's, it's good majority of the time. <laughs> so you don't, I mean, basically hold it the same way all the time, doesn't matter how far the kick is. Every all right. time. All right, there you go. It's, I, like, it's, a, it's a good question. I don't know if, if it seems to me that place kicking is a little bit like free throw shooting in basketball. Mm. That What you mm -hmm. want to do is find something that works and repeat it over mm -hmm. and over where you don't even have to think about it. Am I, am I kind of on to something with that? Pretty much. The only thing that changes when you go further back is the celebration. Yeah. <laughs> I, I told you. I told you this would be fun. Good, good hey, answer. Hey, I'll get you guys ribs every week. You guys are entertaining. Me. Good on you, mate. <laughs> Rolo, the, uh, I, I don't know what it does to the staff. When you get into these, I mean, I don't, I don't, I know for a fact a Hawaii team has never been. I'm not even sure if a Mountain West team I'm has sure gone either. five overtimes. I mean, there's a certain stress level with that, that you guys managed to at least, at least visibly uh, looking at you guys on the yeah. side. I didn't see a single coach that couldn't see the guys in the box because they had, they got kind of no, that, smoke glass up. I don't spend a whole lot of time on the defensive headset, but when I flip over. You know, they're, they're fairly calm, too. Yeah. Um, a lot of the talking comes before the series starts. You know, it was interesting because, right, we went offense first, then they went offense, and then you flip. But, you know, sometimes you can sw flip the field. So when they asked me, I said, no, we'll stay on this one. And then Brent said, no, we'll stay at this end zone. We stayed all five overtimes on yeah, this end zone. Yeah, the same side. Yeah. That's what, I have never at seen least, that I mean, before. the poor fans down here. Yeah, yeah. they too. <laughs> But I was really happy because that was our end. Yeah. Oh, it was? Yeah. So okay. we were on the end where the action was, which was, yeah, just fortuitous. We were on the 35, but we were on your 35. Oh, perfect. Yeah, it was, per it was great. And uh, although I have to say, I just think, I mean, first of all, one of the officials was kind of like doing this on Ryan's he, he missed did? extra point. Mm. And, but I realized when I watched, I could tell, like I could see that the San Jose State kicker's kick was off because – where we are, if someone's wide left, you see the ball, the ball. like you always see the ball. Right. If you if it's going through, you see a point where there's no ball is just goalpost, and it wasn't that. And then I'm thinking, 
I, maybe I'm old and blind because why are the San Jose State players celebrating? All over the field. Was that crazy? It made you think, am I missing something here? I mean, do you always celebrate misses that way? <laughs> he shook me off when I iced him, too. I didn't see it till film. Yeah. He gave me the old the Kimbe Butombo, no, no, no. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> And then he missed it, so. <laughs> yeah, when you do that, you yeah. kind of got to make it. Yeah, that's right? right. That's right. You miss it. It's like, you know, it, no one would have been, when Joe Namath guaranteed the Jets were going to beat the Colts, it only works if you win. That's right. <laughs> Otherwise, you look like a buffoon. <laughs> let, let me get to a couple of things about Wyoming. Okay. Uh, because this is, I think another thing about, uh, this is a Craig Bowl. I just, I don't know if you read the story. Because uh, no. I've had Dave Walsh on. Okay. Today was their 35-year play-by-play guy. And Does he, he do that, radio up there? Yeah. I think I'm going on his show tomorrow. Oh, yeah, of course. Okay. He's a really good guy. But he's uh, – and he's very reasonable. He won't ask anything stupid, I promise. Yeah. I made sure that when I <laughs> – Craig Bowl won't come on, by the way. He won't? He does not do individual interviews. Oh. He will only do group ones. So I would have I would have liked to get that information to you earlier <laughs> yeah. before you agreed to go on Walsh's yeah. show. But one of the things he said about him is the guy's grown up in small-town Nebraska – Played at Nebraska, Nebraska for Osborne, coached there. He's a small town. He's now in the process of buying cattle in Laramie so he can live in Wyoming till he dies. If I had to live in Laramie for six months, I would die. <laughs> I mean, it's not for everybody. Yeah, I'm telling you. It's like there's, I, I just started doing games in Laramie when there were two traffic lights. Really? Yeah, I think they're up to five now. Mm. Even if you had a ranch, you couldn't live with No, I, I don't. What would I do on a ranch? I, I have no, I'm a city kid. I have no clue. I just try to stay out of the way of large animals. I'm not going to cultivate them. I mean, come on. And so he's, he fits there. He does. He, he does really fit fits there. there. And what I'm noticing, it seems to go a concomitant of that, is he, he still believes, even though he had Josh Allen, people think, oh, they're pass happy. They're not. They're actually power running. He's no, a power running game guy. Let's see. What is their numbers? 177 rush attempts and uh, 138. So they're, they're much more run than pass. Yeah. You know, and, and that's – I think it's a team philosophy for him. He wants to play great defense and be real sound on special teams and drive the ball and play field position football. Um, he's, he's a traditionalist in that type of way, but – he is a good football coach. I mean, you just look. Anybody, I mean, I hope everyone here goes to the game, but watch how hard their defense plays every play. You'll, you'll be very impressed with the respect they pay to the game by the way they play. I think they got a couple of NFL kids on that defense. Well, I, Carl Granderson? Yeah, he can go today if he wants to leave today. That'd be fine. And then that safety, Andrew Wingard. Yeah. I, you know, that guy makes plays all over the field. That yeah, has he's for very a couple physical. Years. Yeah, since his sophomore year. It was kind of his breakout year. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not uh, – people think – Wait you see their Mike – I know, you know, Jelani's playing great for us, but number 30 for them is really – you know, he, he was on their team last year, but I think he's a different player this year. Is he a little more of a – I wouldn't call Jelani a downhill type of linebacker. He does a lot of things. A lot of, you know, and he's good. He's good in space, and he gets out, and he gets to the perimeter. But this kid, Logan Wilson, you're talking – he's 6'2", 250. Is that a Casper? Which is so far north in Wyoming, it's practically in Alaska. Is it? Oh, it's really up there. I mean, <laughs> it's cold up there, too. It's crazy. I, I had a uh, broadcast partner in basketball here that went to Casper Junior College. Really? It's in the middle of nowhere. Hmm. But that kid's 250 pounds. He is, when someone says, what's a downhill line? That kid's That's a downhill like, linebacker, yeah. isn't he? Yes, he is. Oh, my goodness. He gets in the gap, and it's over. They are, they are just a physical football team all around, you know. I watched last year's game yesterday. Um, you know, and they, and they were pretty good. And obviously, we all know we should have won that game. Oh. Um, but I think they're Painful. playing pretty inspired football right now on defense. Okay, they don't have. Hey, you know I... who's really good? Boise. That's yeah, a pretty think? good Boise team. That's and and uh, we talked to Dave Walsh, and he said they had no answers for Boise. They were never really in it. Never had a feeling like they, they were could probably maybe in the win. Washington State game more than the Boise game. Yeah, interesting. Because Washington State's pretty good. Yeah, they are, and that was a closer game. You know, that was 19. 41-19, yeah. but, but a, a couple people a couple told of me it was, closer, yeah. Yeah, it was closer than it, the score indicated. Mm-hmm. So, I, I, you know, you are pretty good on this. You, you kind of predicted San Jose State was going to be a battle, be prepared to go to the end. You feeling the same way about this? No doubt. No doubt. This is, uh, you know, 
I think they pride themselves on our defense. I think, you know, our offense is getting a lot of attention, so that's going to be a, a pretty strong battle. Um, you know, I think they're getting healthier, it sounds like. So, um, And their young quarterback is just gaining more and more experience as a true freshman. So, um, you know, the, the offense that, you know, what do they average? You know, 302 yards a game versus our defense is, is probably where this thing ends up, right. you know. Well, I, I mean, I'm excited for it. I'm hoping the crowd will come out. I, I think a lot of people, and nobody in this room needs to be told this, because I don't. I think the way I see this team is still a work in progress. It's oh, trying to improve no doubt about that. all the time, but it's it's a fun team to. Am I right? It's a fun team to watch. It's entertaining every snap. There's not a single time when the offense takes the field where I don't think a touchdown's possible on any play. Unfortunately, there's matter. not a single time when the defense goes on the field where the reverse isn't also true. I mean, you know, we have some I, – I actually – I don't like to say lucky because I, I just think that that doesn't give an opponent credit. Mm -hmm. But I thought some of their long pass completions were perfect storm passes. Did you think that? Well, the really good one was the one down the left sideline. Yes. There, that was a beautiful throw and catch. And uh, it was, it, and, it was and in the covered, only, the coverage covered was good. Well, it was in the only place coverage. it could have been. <laughs> yeah. You know, the, the tight end wheel route was wide open, and then that guy started running. Yeah. But 84, you know, that was a pretty ball. But when he caught that one on, I think it was number four on the left sideline, that was, that was a pretty catch. That kid played a good game at quarterback, too. No, I think it was, I said this to, I was talking to someone. I can't remember who, but I said, my guess is that's the best game he's had, including Pop Warner. Maybe. He was on fire. I thought his throw, I thought he was terrific. Yeah, I did too. And he played tough. He took some shots, though. Oh, man. I don't know who hit the, when he completed the touchdown pass in the end zone to Oliver, oh, no. he it? took a shot as he let go of the ball. I'm like, there's I'm no think way. It was. This is going into the stands. Perfect. It was perfect. Crazy. And it doesn't happen very often, but he no. had one of those games. They were ready to play. Yeah, they were. They were thinking, this is where we turn our season around. Oh, yeah. But to stop that and to, on the road, to be able to come out with the win there, I, that says a lot about the grit of this team. I think so, and, and the character. And, and I think that's why this team is probably more enjoyable to watch, and, and, and everyone seems to be in agreement. It's, it's how they play and, and why they play. You know, it's not – I don't think there's a lot of selfishness being seen. I think you can see them not panicking. You don't see the defense talking to the offense about hurry up and score or do your job or yeah. stuff like that. It's it's everyone just kind of in it together, which I think I think local people especially can sense that kind of thing. Well, I, you know what I think local people love? My, this is my sense from doing this for near 30 years now. People love big hits. They, I mean, more than – I mean, you were involved in some of the best offensive explosions this program's had, and, and people like that. Yeah. But when somebody just rocks somebody's world on the defensive side, I think the loudest cheers I've ever heard. Do you agree with this? I, I know, I've been on defense. No, I know. I know. And I, and I think finding inspiration in players like Kaimana Padello, yes. I, I think local people really – um, hold that beer to themselves, you know. That kid is a great example of someone who refused to listen. That's when right. When people told him, ah, you're too small. Nah, you don't weigh enough. Yeah, no way. Yeah, you couldn't play defensive. Yeah. Nah, that's it. Go, you got to go D3. This is not for you. And well, he just refused to listen. And he had to prove Corey Batoon wrong. He goes, that guy's going to start a defensive end. And Jake Yoro's like... Just wait and see. Watch, watch for yourself. Yeah, well, and, and, and now, and, and just the eruption when he makes a sack at home is, is pretty special. You yeah. Because like, the crowd knows it. They're, they're fighting with him. You know, they, I think they're all kind of on that journey with Kaimana, which is, you know, I, I know he's a junior and we get him one more year, but it's just, it's so good to have him around. People love relentlessness. That's right. We've had some linebackers here. I, you know, does, any, does the name Corey Paredes win a bell? Do you remember when he saved the game by running down Colin Kaepernick? Yeah. Now, Corey is not a guy. When Corey Paredes runs a 40, they time him with a sundial. <laughs> but not that day. Not that day. Not that day. He just said, this has to happen. And he caught Kaepernick, knocked the ball. It was the game. That's right. I mean, we have had. 
some players here, Mike Tressler, I can tell, yeah. I could go through the list, but we have had so many local players who are just gutty. I think Nate Jackson. Nate Jackson, in that one. The biggest know. hitter we've ever had, yeah. pound for pound, yeah. I think. Um, Eric Lalau. Eric Lalau. Oh my! And he was like five ten. Every year there seems to be two or three that people just, you know, are so proud of and latch on to and, and never forget. I, I'm going to tell you guys, getting my attention is that uh, can I eat Picanso? Yeah. Holy! Yeah. Sh- I mean, he's he plays some hat on people now. Yes, he does. And and then Cheyenne Sanitoa, who's kind of well, you know with the hair and everything, sort of like a smaller guy's Jelani. In a way. Yeah, he's a wild man. But boy, does he come off the you edge! Know, he's like, the one that caught that uh, tight end. He yes. ran down the tight end. Uh, he had an angle, but t- the effort he showed, you know, to run the kid down, not to score, was pretty impressive. You know, you can't really. I don't know if you can teach that. You got to kind of recruit it. You got to yeah. notice it. Right. You have to evaluate that. Passion. Yes. Right. I mean, it's a hard thing to quantify. Yeah. But one of the things that makes this team successful is there's a lot of guys on this team that I would say that about. Yeah. You're listening to Call the Coach, presented by Coors Light on ESPN 1420 and the Sideline Hawaii app. Welcome back to Ruby Tuesdays. This is Call the Coach. Uh, We do it every Tuesday. A little delayed today because of the uh, extra inning wild card game won by the Colorado Rockies over the Chicago Cubs today. Joe Madden's on the hot seat suddenly. Uh, So we are going to get, let's get back to football talk because I I can only imagine uh, the frustration and I I know that you love the fans who come to the stadium and they're fabulous. I I just think we have the fans who are there are fabulous. I do do wonder at times what's it going to take to get back to 30,000 plus because in terms of the product on the field my opinion is this team is worth the price of admission. I just don't even think it's arguable at this point. It's really fun to watch. They play with passion. They give you the best they have. They're not perfect, but man, do they give it up? Yeah, and I think we're going to try some. Uh, we're going to try a little in-game deal um, with the students this weekend. Hopefully, that goes over well. Um, just you know, trying to make the whole experience. Um, more enjoyable, you know. People need to get their money's worth. Things are hard, you know. We all know where we live, and things cost money, and people giving up their time and all that stuff. I understand it all. We just we got to work harder to make it something that people can't miss. Well, it's it, I'm I'm there. Yeah, I'm in. I'll be there. <laughs> I, I'd be. I wouldn't be good for me if I didn't show. <laughs> so, I, but I'm I'm just I I can't tell you. Uh, when I was in the car with the and we're driving to the stadium, I can't tell, I couldn't properly admit how much I was looking forward to calling that game. And I feel the exact same way about this weekend. Because I've, here's what the feeling is. I feel like we're playing a lot of games that are winnable. I don't think they're guarantees. I think you have to be, you got to have your at least a minus game to win them. But I feel like we got a chance to do that. And that's we haven't felt that in a while around here. It's hard to win a game learning, losing the turnover battle like we did, you know. So that that showed some character. But I think this team feels like they're they're in in for a fight every game and, and can win every game they go into. They, they they really feel good about the guys that are next to them and and they believe in their coaches and um, I think the assistant coaches are, are a major reason why the team is so tight because they, they have really taken their groups and pointed them in the right direction. We had Mark Weber on the show this morning. Oh, you did. And Mike guy. Kelly, who's our GM, just said, I haven't heard lately a coach's interview that I enjoyed more than that one. Really? The guy, yeah, the guy is, I, there's something so real about him. He's not a yeller, as you know, he's not a yeller or a screamer. He, he get pointed if he needs to, but his preference is to teach. Yeah. And, I mean, that's what, right what he regards himself yeah. as. He's a teacher. I, I just thought he was terrific. By the way, when you see him, tell him how many people. And I had other people Good. on the street today tell me how much they enjoy well, it. I, I'm, I'm glad that the, the community gets a chance through your programming to, to really get to, to see these guys' character and who they are. And um, I know Banks, you know, is, is entertaining when he comes on. Yes, he is. Um, I don't know if you've had Coach Longo on or. 
Well, one probably, time. Probably only had one Platoon time. on, yeah, I'm sure. We, oh, I had Corey a couple times. You know, yeah. he, you can tell he's a football guy. But, oh, really? Yeah, Webb's, uh, you know, I think he's enjoying it. Uh, we're enjoying having him, and, and obviously the winning helps, but he is a good person, and he's and he, and he likes coaching football. Well, we've had, I mean, pretty much everybody on at least once. Yeah, I mean, I try to kind of yeah, spread it out. Rode it around a little bit, but I have to say, I mean, Corey Batoon reminds me a little bit, and the, even the way he speaks. I know. He's got a little Randa in him, uh-huh. doesn't he? I know. <laughs> I thought that, too. When I, I, I mean, that. really, he has a little, he, and I know he's a big uh, admirer of Dave Aranda. He said that, but he does seem to have a measured... Way I don't know if he's quite as dry as Dave because it's hard to get that dry. I mean that's why he's like a, he has a. Con, I mean as you know I don't have to tell you but a lot of people never got to know that Dave Arand is a really funny dude. He but it's a very dry wit. Yeah. You know but once you get it I mean it's a hoot and rare. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I, I think Corey growing up uh, growing up here he understands how to how to smile a little bit more but yeah he loves football just as much as Dave. Well, I mean, interesting stuff. I, I, I don't know, because there was a lot of tumultuousness, for lack of a better word, with the staff last year. and It just, at times, I felt like, oh, man, this is getting fractured. For whatever reason, right. I just feel like this staff seems very cohesive. Well, they're 18 years old, and, you know, they think they know everything, but the truth is they're not stupid, and, and they can feel things, and they can sense things, and... Um, I think they sense the the tightness of our staff. Um, I think especially after the Army game was it, it, to see that you know guys were so upset. Jelani's locking up, you know, from from cramps and and you know people are are crying, they're upset, but they're hugging each other, talking about let's get back to work and and not feel this feeling again. So I I, I really do believe that comes from uh, the assistant coaches really doing a great job. Getting the point across to what's important about this game. Yeah, uh, I mean, I that's not something. I mean, I know when you try to hire, you'd love to have a guarantee that that's what you're going to get. But it's not to work that. There's too many. No, there's a lot of money in the game, right? There's a lot of you know the, the the game. There's so much money in it sometimes, right? And I just need one more move, and then you know I'm making all this money, and you. I don't think there's an ulterior motive on, on the staff, and. and that makes it nice to go to work. There's a there's a nice trust there. Well, I, I don't know that you could hope for much better in terms of how everybody gets along, the things they do when they're you know getting after it. It does seem like it's it's kind. Of, I don't know. My feeling is it's a little special. Yeah, I I think so too. And I the way the guys are playing and responding and all of that. Love to keep it, keep it together. You know. We're gonna we're gonna take we're gonna talk a little bit more. I want to encourage you. If you have a question for Coach Rolo, two nine six fourteen twenty. If you don't, well, I only wish you were here forty minutes ago, because <laughs> then you would. We're gonna take a quick timeout. We'll be right back. We're at Ruby Tuesdays in Moanalua, and this is called the Coach. You're listening to Call the Coach, presented by Coors Light on ESPN 1420 and the Sideline Hawaii app. This has been the fastest hour and a half <laughs> I can remember. We uh, want to take a couple of calls. We're here at Ruby Tuesday for Call the Coach, Wyoming, 6 p.m. kickoff on Saturday. Let's start with Ted. Ted, you're on with Rolo. Hey, what's hey, up, man? How's it, guys? Hi, Ted. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I, that's my alma mater, UH, and I've uh, been here for 34 years on the islands. And back then, the good old days with Gabriel and Sims and all those guys, um, and through the days of yourself and Brennan and Timmy Ching, big fan, had season tickets and all that. After that, uh, kind of faded and didn't, didn't re-sign with the tickets and all. So I'm just wondering... Um, you know, about Cole McDonald, if he's the real deal, if I want to be in the stand singing, Cole McDonald had an arm, E-I-E-A-O, <laughs> with that arm he had some legs. I, I know, uh, I know, uh, you know, other teams might be able to see him and check him out and if he's for real and if I should get those tickets again. Well, well of course, we, <laughs> I think the, the crowd knows the answer, Yeah. I think Cole has, 
you know, he's played six games for us, and he's done some really amazing things. And, and you know, I think you look at the shovel passes, he's more than just a pocket quarterback. He shows the ability to run, and he, he has a playmaker ability and a competitor on, on game day that, that I think you can sense when you're in the stands. So, Ted, you're always welcome to come back. Bring a friend. It's a great time. The kids really appreciate the, 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 the fans that do come out. They understand they're playing for something greater than themselves, and we'd love to see you at Aloha Stadium. Well, Sam, I sense it coming back of, a, of, a, of greatness. And I have two young kids myself. I want to I wanna turn them on to the experience, so... I'm, I'm probably going to do it, and hopefully you, you keep this rolling like you are rolling, bitch. <laughs> I'm going to try my best, Ted. I promise you that. I was there, man, when you, you put up all those numbers, man. I was in the stands. It was great. <laughs> well, we're going to have more numbers. More numbers, more to follow. Thanks, Ted. Appreciate you. We got, uh, you're welcome. We got Paul on the line. Hi, Paul. Hey, Paul, hey, Bobby. hey Coach. How you doing? Hi, Paul. Hi, Paul. How you doing? Uh, Paul from Minilani, we're from Deep 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 De
Senior, when's senior night? Well, it's going Can to I come to that too? Well, we're going to wait till it's Ruby your Tuesday. senior night. No, he thinks I, that Ruby Tuesday. No, no, it's the last game of the year. But if we can get you to convince your dad and maybe your dad and mom or whatever to come out, we'll put on the Ritz for that. I have a lot of people here that will tell you. They're coming to that out. game. They're coming Pull them out. Game. We'll put them on a show. It's kind Beautiful. of like coming to America. That's cool. the movie? Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful thing. Well, we're almost out of time, but means we do have... One last good bit of business here. And Stan, that is, get up here. We've got to do the Live Aloha Bucks. For those that might not know this, most of you do. Bring Mescal, But too. we come started on, on, doing on. a deal where Rolo would give away $100, encouraging the person who wins to find a way to make that grow, to pay it forward. And we've had some incredible ideas have come up on this deal where people are really, really engaged in finding a way to grow it. Some simply donate it back. So, you know, and you don't have to do any of that. You can put it in your pocket and walk. But we have people who are caring here, and it's one of the fun things we do every and week. And other so, people are getting helped. It's, yes. really, it's really a cool deal. So, so with no further ado, who's going to read and who's going to pull? Now, get the, the, the special teams player of the week. You pull. You oh, make yeah, somebody's day. Just go ahead. But, no, I don't want to say pull. No, no, don't no, say no, pull. No, pull. <laughs> Grab one. <laughs> All right, Meskel's taking it out, and the winner is Jerry Anaya. <laughs> Yay, Jerry! Here, Meskel. Here, Dan, go give Walk him a hug. Walk over with that. Yeah, there you go. Go give him a hug. There you go, Jerry. Congrats, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Good job, Jerry. I know. <laughs> thank you, Jerry. <laughs> Good job, Jerry. That's well, well done. We have a great group here. I, I, can't, I just want to mention this because I, we have done Call the Coach for any number of years. This is a particularly spirited group. Yes, it is. Uh, we appreciate you. We appreciate you coming down. Maybe we need to bring a player every time. Maybe because I'm telling you, you've got winners so far. You had yeah. Cole and Musa and uh, Cole. Cash. Yeah, Cash. Cash, he likes to go by. I didn't him. know that, but yeah. now I know. Now you know it. And uh, and so those guys were great. And these two, uh, I, they're hard to beat these guys. That's right. I don't know. We don't have any. Are we out of Australians now? Well, we got a couple. Well, yeah. You got another one. Well, who's the other guy? Who's the, other, who's the half? Oh, Derek's half. There you go. Derek Thomas lives with all the Australians, so they say he's half Australian. He's half. All right. That's, that counts. <laughs> we are running just about out of time. I did want to thank Rick Nakashima who's the proprietor here at Ruby Tuesdays. It's a friendly venue. Thanks to all of the staff here. They do a great job. Rolo, 6 o'clock uh, appointment viewing at Aloha Stadium. We wish That's you the right. best of luck. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you, everyone, for coming out. For Thank Nick Rolovich, for all of us at ESPN 1420, I'm Bobby Curran. Aloha. You've been listening to Call the Coach with Nick Rolovich, live from Ruby Tuesday in Moanalua, presented by Coors Light. Also, mahalo to No Foods of Hawaii. Say yes to no, the HGEA. We are HGEA strong. City Mill, big on health, big on savings. Proud to be local. Hawaiian Financial Federal Credit Union. Xanthacin, the safe anti-inflammatory for health and longevity. Available at GNC, POP Fishing and Marine. Gear, glory, we got it on Pier 38. This has been another exclusive University of Hawaii sports presentation on ESPN 1420.